Hey everyone, I just wanted to make this quick video to um, get something that's been on my heart. Um, everybody thinks that appearances are everything. Uh, in the world we live in, what you wear, you know, they say the clothes makes the man, stuff like that. And, um, I've seen this in churches too. And what I mean by that is there are a number of churches where they take the term Sunday best to um, really an ultimate extreme. Um, now I have no problem with the people that do wear suits and ties and you know their best clothes to church. Um, it has become a tradition. It was a tradition started in the 50s, in all honesty. Prior to the 50s, a lot of churches did not see its congregants show up wearing their so-called Sunday best. And a little bit of history is that in the 50s, if you were a businessman and you wanted to make business connections, you would go to church wearing your Sunday best as a sign that you were a businessman and connect with other businessmen that way. So you weren't about doing the Lord's business, you were more or less just uh, doing your own business. So take that for what you will. <clears throat> but in today's society, um, you know, money's not as prevalent for some people and uh, people don't feel like they can go to church because they don't have a suit and tie. They have jeans and a t-shirt or uh, a polo shirt like I'm wearing right now or um, you know um, maybe a hoodie. This uh, this got me thinking about a verse in the Bible. It's by James. Um, James was hit with uh, Sort of the same thing, really, going on. Uh, he calls it the sin of partiality. Or at least, um, you know, that's the way some translations uh, put it in there. But this is what James, the brother of Jesus, says. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord our glory, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay more attention to the one who wears the fine clothes and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones who oppose you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you have been called? If you, were really if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails to, in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, and the main reason why I'm sharing that is because, you know, when we watch... Um, the televangelists, and anyone who knows me knows I hold great disdain for many of them. Um, 
you'll always notice that when they pan into the audience, um, there's always well-dressed people. Uh, some of what I've heard, rumors, um, say that they actually watch the people come in and they tell the people where to sit. Um, so it's kind of an interesting, interesting um, thought there because they're doing exactly what James said. They're showing um, partiality. And the thing is, is that God died for all. Jesus died for all. It doesn't matter if you're poor or rich, whether you're black or white or yellow or, you know, whatever your ethnic background is, Jesus died for you. So, if we show partiality, we're not doing what God has called us to do. And that's where he talks about the sin. And you got to remember, too, that, like he po points out, there are things that were going on in that church where um, they were letting the rich people sit in certain seats, but these were the same people that were suing them because of their faith. Doesn't make sense, does it? Yes, we are to show them that we are Christians by our love. But at the same time, who knows what that one person, you know, the pro poor person that lives on poor street can teach the person who lives on rich street and vice versa. The whole thing is, is as Paul writes in one of the scriptures, there's no Jew nor Gentile in the, in the faith. We're all one. It's what the world tries to tell us in their own twisted beliefs that we're all the same underneath. And it's true in the Christian faith for all those that confess Christ. We're all the same. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. We are all heirs to Christ. We are all heirs under the same sacrifice, the same cross that made it so that we were bridged with God. We could communicate with God. We can call God Abba. So the next time you go to church and you see that person that looks timid because they're looking around and um, they're not wearing the best of clothes, don't give them a cold shoulder. Go up, introduce yourselves. Give them a handshake or, or a holy hug. Do something that's going to show them that you appreciate them as a brother or sister. Introduce them to some of your friends. Because you don't know what that person's going to be capable of. You don't know what God has planned in that person's life to be for you, for the church, for the kingdom. I guess the best thing that we could say is we don't know. God knows the hearts of all. God knows the plans of all. God has planned everything in our lives so we cannot judge what the judge of the universe has already put into place anyway that's just some brief thoughts god bless love you all talk to you later